So I'll be. Thank you very much for AIOC and Royal College for giving this opportunity. I'm sharing my experience of thousand plus DMEC, and I'll be talking a little bit of uh, some uh, some uh, thoughts. So I do not have any financial interest. It is not moving. So I always think that when I perform a DMAC surgery, normally I perform about six to eight DMAC procedure in a week. Sometimes it is the second eye of Fuchs patient after treating their first eye about four to six weeks back. So this kind of faster sequential bilateral surgery is only possible because of DMEC provides quick unaided visual re recovery. So when I look back, I started long time back, probably at the same time with Rajesh, but I failed to continue it because of a lot of failure in my beginning years in 2019, nine to 2016. And several attempts every year and several failures. And then I went back to DSEC for next five years. Till 2015, 16, I was watching, I was listening to Rajesh and other junior colleagues that how, what are the problems with me? And, and I practice a lot of things, you know, at lab and then the uh, Beltsman paper came on stamps and a lot of things are easy. Actually, this S, F, or P, these marks are very important for Indian eyes, where the eyes are dark brown or dark colored eyes, where it is very difficult to see the orientation. And it is, I say that it is stromal sight, it is severe, it is smooth surgery, and always it is a successful surgery. So there are two hurdles I have, uh, and that Rajesh has shown all the uh, uh, tips of donor preparation. Donor preparation, I know that in Western world, it is by the eye banks, they prepared the tissue and they say that they are privileged and maybe spoiled <laughs> the surgeons. But uh, they get all ready uh, the macro That is required for easy going and for quick uh, and the, you know that probably this year in US, the DMEC will surpass the DSEC in United States because last year it is only a few hundred difference. Donor damage, as Rajesh said, it may be up to 20%, but usually with learning it reduced. And this is my uh, that typical technique. I usually do most of my cases with this simple technique. It is usually 9.5. Then I make a stromal punch of three millimeter. And sometimes I use air also. Uh, we uh, Rajesh has shown the air and you can use the tissue in both the ways. And then you make the stamp and you punch the tissue with the desired uh, diameter. So it may be eight millimeter, 7.5 millimeter, whatever size. So that unfolding is the second hurdle and uh, Rajesh and Soden, that beautiful ways of learning it. There are very uh, YouTube videos are there, but anterior chamber fluid dynamics are very important. A bit of physics is important. And also the, as any asymmetrical mark, all are important. The anterior chamber depth, configuration of the iris, I will position either in the, in the bag or in the sulcus, or with, uh, whether it is uh, scleral fixated I will all depends. Now I try to look at the donor uh, uh, skull behavior before taking the uh, thing in my injector system. Typically I use this injector from Iowa Curtis, and I try to see the donor. That you see the different types of scroll when you put the uh, donor graft in a petri dish, and you see that uh, uh, the typical scroll is al 
always classical double scroll, but we do not get always. But Rajesh beautifully demonstrated that we can agitate the tissue and we can have those kind of configuration. And that unfolding, so when you go all the way with, uh, with your procedures day by day, in typical scenario, you can do the same, redo the same procedure and you just pin one side of the periphery and dip in the chamber and with one hand or two hand techniques or uh, little tapping on the dome of the cornea you can un unfold the whole tissue and gradually you try to center it so little bit of fluid injection and fluid degradation is important when you are totally fine with the centering you go right up to the center and give air bubble oh. our published result in 600 eyes about three years back the indication was like we see a lot of cases in our part of the country our apcd is around 36 percent but whereas the other part it is around 15 percent but when i see the this thousand result the the ratio has not changed much. I, I see a lot of HSV endothelial uh, keratitis induced edema and also a lot of eye syndrome and donor tissue typically between 37 to 90. I use a lot of tissue above the age of 80 years. But again, the cell count in our part of the country is also higher than the rest of the country. So this is the uh, Pre-operative presenting visual acuity, you see that we see a lot of bad cases when they present to us. But within five years, this vision is maintained around 20 by 30 uh, at 60 months, that is five years follow-up. So when we see the, uh, the graph of this, that 45% of our patient actually achieve 20 by 25 vision. It is unlike other people, they actually do more with Western world literature. They do more with FECD, about 70 to 80%. They are, this 2025 or better vision is about 80%, whereas my series, it is around 45%. Again, uh, when I look my data, when 100, 100 eyes, the three month cell loss was 26 percent then when i uh, checked about one year ecl up uh, it is about 34 percent but when compared the two results between fecd eyes and pbk eyes or other causes the difference is usually 33 versus 41 percent this is the uh, uh, 4.5 years follow-up this is around two years follow-up but you see the endothelial cell density over of five years. We start with uh, 20, 2,800 cells, then gradually downs, and it is 1,400 at the at five years. And cell loss after five years is close to 50 percent. And annual cell loss after six months is around uh, 3.9 percent. So there is a good paper, and it has mentioned that at six months, if the cell count is, and uh, that means the graft will survive more. This is the complication rate. So overall complication, if you, this is a busy slide, so I summarized it. Donor damage only 1.4%. Bleeding from PI site is very important. We cannot do uh, more cases prior, uh, prior to surgery because of they come late. And uh, you see that graft detachment in my series is 12% when rebubbling required is only 7%. Whereas the graft detachment is a pre-prepared, pre-punched tissue, preloaded tissue is higher as reported by many people. And we have seen that the steroid induced glaucoma is around 12%. Primary graft failure that happens initial 100 cases that is there, three only. And secondary graft failure is around 6%. Graft rejection in my series is 3.8%. Repeat graft is 
So if you see the uh, 2019 data that with 600 ID, you see that primary uh, the steroid induced glaucoma was 7%, now it is 12.2%. And the secondary graft failure was 1%, now it is 6%. And rejection that time was 1.2%, it is 3.8%. Why this is this? This is a, a big question to me. Probably I have this data recently compiled and in this, this two and a half years period of COVID is there, a lot of patients actually didn't come for follow-up. They used steroid, whatever doses they are getting. And uh, so secondary glaucoma are higher. If they have problem, they could not come to me or come to go to any corneal surgeon, something like that. So COVID has increased this data. This is my assumption of this. Then uh, uh, I am more uh, conscious about DMEC PD. It is the peripherally trifinated. We know that superior uh, cornea has a more endothelial cell than other part of the cornea, and then the any peripheral part is more than the central corneal thing. So I try to go peripheral while preparing my donor graft, and we compared and published our result in cornea in 2019, and that shows that after one year follow up that all folks cases the cell density is higher with DMEC PD cases and if you see these two eyes where it is one is four years and one is like is almost same and two eyes one eyes the cell density is much lower where I have taken the central uh, donor or whereas the if I take the peripheral one the cell count is higher this is two almost uh, sequential surgery with a gap of three months you see that after five years both the graphs are tremendously very good uh, cell count of after five years it is 20 100 plus close to 2200 uh, endothelial cell and other things like as i said earlier 80 years plus i use a lot because we have to use because of short of donor cornea in our country and we have to use and we have shown that there is nothing wrong in using the uh, above 80 years of old again likewise rajesh showed that i use the uh, bandage contact lens interface technique so that i can use one tissue for two patients so continuous learning is going on a lot of lot of uh, things are there difficult in some eyes, but I am telling you that after this thousand, now it is 1200 plus. So 70% issue will listen to the rest 30%. You need a lot of tricks to fix those things. I have several, another question that this patient had a clear graft on day 18, that is third visit. I cleared him, go home now. He was from a different state, but he present on emergency with sudden loss of, uh, 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 I mean, dimness of vision. And this detachment happened after three weeks. So I do not understand why this thing happens. After complete clear, perfectly attached on three visits, 2040 vision. So this is one. And another question I, I am trying to think about what is, literature says about silent rejection. This is a typical rejection of DMEC. So you see moderate, mild to moderate corneal edema with good uh, uh, amount of KPs. But again, you see the, the percentage of graph rejection in three years back versus now it is 3.8%. It is higher. Most of the reports are up to 4%. One report from uh, Price showed that 5% 5, uh, 5 but that is for steroid for only one year. But all of my patients, so to say, is continuing with steroid. Are we missing silent rejection? So this is a case where uh, you see that I, uh, two years, the specular and the graft was fine. This this patient came with uh, KPs. No, no, this is a routine follow-up. I saw few KPs and it is to me, it is a silent rejection. And 
after treatment with step up of steroid, this patient is doing fine and no KP is everything fine. This patient didn't have any symptom and this patient is going good. So in my series, the silent rejection is around 38%. Out of these 37, 14 patient had silent rejection. Probably we are missing this silent rejection. So take home messages in another country, cataract surgery rate has increased to 5,000 per million population per year. We'll have more PBK or pseudophagic corneal edema because that is the primary indication in our country and developing world. We have also some amount of Fuchs dystrophy. We need to perform more and more EK in the choice will be DMAC. We need more co trained corneal surgeon. At the same time, we need to increase our donor cornea pool. That is only po possible if we have robust eye bank support within our own community. And the last two had to start with DMEC, don't give up. Thank you very much for your patience, Yari. Dr. Bazak, do you